Okay, so we all know that Apple has been killing it over the past few years with their M-series MacBooks. And, well, I got one. So why did I actually buy one? Why did I go for the M1 instead of the M2? And most importantly, why you should get an M1 MacBook in 2023? Okay, so first things first, why did I even go for a MacBook instead of some Windows computer? Well, the answer is quite simple. I just wanted to try something new. I have seen dozens of reviews of this machine on YouTube. And the main thing that I got from it is that the battery life is absolutely incredible. And this was the thing that my previous Windows laptop was lacking in. It was getting about two to three hours of battery life, that is if I was lucky. And the thought of having a machine that I can take anywhere with me without having to plug it into the wall each and every time was just brilliant. Like, to be honest with you, I don't do a lot of traveling. I just travel with my train to school and back. But every time I was on the road or on the tracks, I guess, I needed to find an outlet to actually utilize the full power of my Windows machine, because without it, it would just stutter all of the time, especially when editing videos. As I heard from all of the reviews, the MacBooks just don't care if they're connected or not. They just give you full power, full fluidity all of the time. And this is exactly what I was after, because I don't need that much power. I just do simple edits and DaVinci Resolve, but I need some power to actually run my 4K footage that I'm recording for you guys. And this is the reason why I went for the M1 instead of the M2. And the second, and to be honest, the main reason why I went for the M1 instead of the M2 is because the M2 laptops are just hella expensive. Like, yeah, sure, I'm making some money through the internet, but not $3,000 for laptop money. At least not yet. So how did I get my hands onto this M1 MacBook? Well. It was just through a local website, something like Facebook Marketplace, and I found it used. The guy who was selling it to me just said that, well, I was just watching films on it, and I don't blame him, the display is absolutely amazing. Like, to be honest with you, most of the time, I wouldn't recommend buying used tech. But in terms of this purchase, it's a very expensive decision to buy a laptop and if you can find something like Apple hardware, which just lasts a long time. Like there are people who are using their MacBooks for like 10 years now, and they still have the same one because it just works and it holds together. Like not to throw shade on Windows laptops because I still use Windows. But have you ever had a Windows laptop that just lasted more than three to five years? Because in my experience, after that, they just kind of get slow. But then again, it's now 2023, and the last time I bought a laptop was in 2019, I think. And back then, you had to choose the correct spec. Nowadays, pretty much everything is kind of good. So if you also plan on buying a used MacBook like I have at a heavy discount, then I would highly advise you to go over the entire checklist of what a used MacBook should have and if it is actually a good working machine worth your money. Don't worry, I will soon make a video about the entire checklist that you need to go over when buying a used MacBook. It will be probably linked here or on the other side. So if I kind of got you on the bandwagon of buying a new MacBook, then well, there are just three things that you really need to consider when choosing between the M1 or the M2. Number one and the most important one is price. Because well, to get an M2, I would have had to basically save up twice as much to get the same laptop. And this is the part where the second point comes in. Yeah, the second, not the third. The second. It's basically the thing that you can't tell a difference between an M1 and an M2 MacBook. They look exactly the same from the outside. No hardware changes. Like, yeah, there's the new Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and HDMI port. But to be honest with you, who really needs those? Like, if you need that, sure, go for the M2. But otherwise, the M1 just seems really fine. And the third part is the performance. Apple quoted like 20% better performance for the M2s compared to the M1s, which means an M1 Max is similar to an M2 Pro. So you can look at that structure like that if you're considering an upgrade. And of course, if you have an Intel-based Mac or you're switching from Windows like I am, I would highly encourage you just go for the M1, save some bucks, and later on when they come out with the M3s or M4s, great naming scheme, Apple, not sus at all. So when they come up with those new models, you can then upgrade from an M1 to an M3 or an M4. But in the end, it's just up to you. What do you do with your money? So this has been it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And don't worry, a MacBook review is coming really soon. So 
I will see you in the next one.